so with the use of wind shake you can add wind effect to 3D objects like parts, meshes or even bones. And a really neat thing about this module is that you don't really need to script anything for it to work. Not to mention that this module is also very performant, which I'm going to show later on in the video, but for right now, let's talk about how to get the windshake module and its overall purpose. So once you go to the dev forum post that I'm gonna leave in the description, windshake made by Boat Bomber is a high performance wind effect for leaves and foliage. And there is also the demo place shown in the video right here, where this place is also uncopy locked and available for download so you can test it yourself. And I also recommend that you check out these other examples made by other people because some of this stuff is pretty amazing. But after these examples, when you scroll down, you're going to have the source right here. And this is going to be the GitHub. And then after that, you're gonna get the Windshake right here. This is the link where you get the model from and it takes you to this page. I already have it in my inventory, but normally you would just press on this button that says get model or something of the sort. And just on the side note, always make sure you are getting the right model and make sure that it's made by the right creator right here. Then going back to the dev forum post, after you get the module, you also have to initialize this. And these are the only lines of code that you are going to need. You need to require the script and then you need to use the init method. There is also a windshake editor plugin and some other information, as well as this demo place right here that I'm also gonna show later on. But let's just jump into studio for now. So now I'm going to show how to use the Windshake module. And once you are in studio after getting the module, you're going to have it in the toolbox in your inventory under the My Models tab right here. And then you just left click on it to insert it. And it's going to appear here in the workspace. And now this module doesn't need to be in the replicated storage because the server doesn't need any access to it. And that's because everything happens on the client. So it can be somewhere in like the starter player and then starter player scripts for now. And then there is also the initialize script that we have to make. So let's add a local script into the starter player scripts. And we can name this one windshake init for initialize. And I'm just going to move it to the side right here. So now you can put the windshake module into this local script right there. And let's require it. Then we just do windshake and then init. And then we can pass it a config table that has an option to match the workspace wind, which we enable by passing in a table that's going to have the match workspace wind right here. And it's going to get out of field once we put the table in. And then we just set it to false. Okay, so we have the module and we have the initialize script, but we don't have any objects. So let me just make some really quickly. And I'm just going to start off by maybe making a grass. And here it is. So let's just insert it into studio now. And here is our grass in studio and I'm just going to move this over really quickly and actually just zoom it in a bit. And let's just really quickly also make the grass green. Just like so and also make the model smaller. And let's also make this uncord and disable collision. And right now I need to add wind to this object right here. And it's as simple as just adding a tag that we can either add in the properties right here or go to view then tag editor and then right here let's add a new tag that's going to be called wind shake and while having this mesh part selected we just need to check this box right here and now it's going to have the wind shake tag in the properties okay and I can just close this window right now and then do a playtest and here is our grass moving, but it's not really moving as you would expect. And that is because of its pivot point being in the middle. If I were to use the move tool, you can see that it has a pivot right there. And for it to work properly, we can either offset the pivot down here in the properties. We can give it like minus five position. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Or go to the model tab and press on edit pivot and just edit it this way. So I need to stop the playtest and then just edit this pivot. So I'm just going to move this one down and then do another playtest. And now we can see that it is actually behaving as it should be. It's not rotating around the central point anymore. So that's how you add a windshake to an object. But there are also different settings that we can mess around with 
and there is also two methods of changing them. What can be done via scripting right here, but there is also a way easier option by adding attributes to this module. I'm just going to show the scripting one really quickly, which is just as simple as using a method called update all object settings. You can also use it for only one object, but I'm going to set the update all object settings. And then there is also a settings table that we need to pass. And this settings table is going to have different values like the wind direction. Here you can see them auto filling. You have the wind power, wind speed and the wind direction. Where the wind direction is a vector 3 that I can set to 1, 0 and 0. Then wind power, which by default is set to 20 and then the wind speed which is set to 0.5. So that's how you can do it via scripting, but a way better alternative, like I said, is going to be the attributes. Where you can add these attributes that are right here, where the wind direction is a vector 3, then a wind power, which is a number, and then a wind speed, which is also a number. So I can change the wind speed to be like 40, then wind power to be like 2, and the wind direction to be like 0, 0 and 1. And I can do another playtest, where here you can see that the patch of grass is moving differently, and that is because I changed the settings in the module. And you can also change them at runtime. But you don't do this by changing the script in the starter player, because this is not the script container that the player uses. To change the attributes, you need to go to the player, then the player scripts, and then the windshake init and the windshake module right here. Here if I change for example the wind speed to be like 80, you can see that the patch of grass is moving a bit quicker. And if I change the wind power to be like 20, you can see that it's basically going into the base plate and off the screen. Because that's a little bit too much, so maybe I'm gonna leave it at 5. Just like so. So you can see that you can change these settings at runtime. Okay, and for now I can close this initialize script. Because I mentioned previously that you can apply windshake to 3D objects that are parts, mesh parts and bones. And I've already done this with a mesh part, so now I'm going to just add a part, also disable its collision, make it anchored, and let's also make it a green block of grass. And now we just go down to the tag, and then add the windshake tag from here. And you can see that it's as simple as that, where this object is being moved by the wind. So I have the mesh part and normal part covered, and now let's move to the bones. And I'm just going to grab a model from a different place, and it's going to be this piece of cloth that I used for a different tutorial. And this is from my smartphone tutorial, but I'm also going to remake this model because I also want to make a tutorial on how to make a windshake on a piece of cloth like this instead of using smartphone because there is some different stuff that needs to be changed. But you can basically see that this model has a bunch of different bones. And now every single bone inside of this object needs to have the windshake tag for it to have the wind effect. And if you don't want to expand the tree, select every single bone, then go down to the tag, what you can do is have a script, where I'm just going to add a script right here, where the content of this script can also be put into the console right here, so it's going to add this automatically, or you can leave this script inside of the root part, or somewhere like server script service, so it's going to add this in the runtime. But the logic is basically the same for both of these options, where you need to have a for loop for index bone in pairs, then workspace that cloth on rope that root part and then get descendants and i'm just going to move this out a bit and then do so then we just check if bone is a bone then we can do bone then add tag and it's going to be the same tag as in both of these parts so just wind shake and i'm not going to leave the script in here what i can do is just copy this content and paste it into the command line right here and now every single one of these bones is going to have the windshake tag. And then I can just remove the script. Okay, so let's just do a playtest now. And here you can see that the piece of cloth is moving, but there needs to be something fixed. Because these bones at the top aren't supposed to be moving, because you can see that it's giving a kind of a weird effect. So let's just select them and remove the tag. Like so. And now it looks way better. And I can also change the settings a bit, to maybe add, for example, more wind power. And of course, if you add too much wind power, you are going to have some weird stuff basically happening. Like this. 
even if it's going to be something like 30. So just remember to not add too much. Okay, and now you might also be curious if this script is really performant, so I'm just going to showcase that. And first I'm just going to add some grass, and I don't really know how much grass it's going to be, but you can see how the engine is basically lagging after I duplicate it. But anyway, let's do another playtest. So with all of this grass basically moving, and the script being at 21% activity, I'm getting 60 FPS that's shown in the corner right here where usually this activity is going to be really bad for like low-end devices like old phones. So you might consider some optimization that I'm going to talk about in a bit. But with all of this grass here, let's also duplicate this, because these parts are meshes where this plane is a skin... Whoa, okay, I don't know why, but after I press on this, everything just started lagging. Anyway, let's try that again. So I'm just going to duplicate some of these. So right now there is 9 of these cloths. And with 9 of them, you can see that I'm getting still 60 FPS. And this script activity is nowhere near as it was previously. So let me just keep duplicating some of these. Okay, it's still 60. Now it's dropping to like 58. And with this many cloths, I don't really know how much that is. I'm still kind of just getting like from 50 to 60 FPS, so let's just do this once more. And I even duplicated my character. But anyway, with all of this basically going on, and the script being at 50% activity, my FPS is still kind of just holding strong. Until I zoomed in that is. So I am not exactly sure how many bones there are in all of these clocks combined, but even like 50 FPS is kind of just playable. So about the optimization, if I go back to this script, there is few different rendering settings that you can change. One is the wind shake that render distance. That by default is set to like 150, but if I change it for example to 20, it's going to render every object that's within the range of 20 stats. So during this playtest, you can see all of this being choppy, and that is because the objects that are close to the render distance are not going to be rendered at 60 frames, because you don't really need that and it's a really good optimization thing. And this distance is the distance to my camera. So here if I zoom it out, none of this is going to move, but if I zoom it back in, you can basically just see it getting smoother and smoother. So that's the render distance, and there is also the max refresh rate. Where if it's set to 1 to 60, this is the 60 frames per second refresh rate, so it's going to update all of this 60 times in 1 second. So this is the 1 60th of a second, and if I change it to for example 30, it's going to be 1 30th, so half of that. 1 15 is going to be the quarter of 60, so it's going to update 50 times a second instead. And I'm just going to change the render distance to 200 now, just to show you the refresh rate. And here you can see it being a bit more choppy. And if I change it to something like 1.1, it's basically going to update once almost every second. So that's how you can optimize this module. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to show right now is going to be the demo place. And you can get the demo place from the dev forum post, and then going to the three dots and pressing on either edit in studio, or you can download the file. I'm just going to download it really quickly, and here I'm going to open from file. And you can see that it basically just has a whole forest, so let's just do a playtest. And here you have these different settings like the wind speed, wind power, wind direction, and the shake distance. Then you have a leaf count in active objects, not streamed, and the total number of meshes. So if I change the distance to like 5000 for example, or 500, my game is running at 30 FPS, and the script activity is at 80%, which is kind of a lot. So like I said previously, you can change the settings to optimize the user experience. And here I'm just going to add more power, and also a bit more speed. So you can see how all of these different meshes and leaves are reacting basically. And if I zoom it out, and then change my render distance, you can see where basically the rendering stops, in like this one big radius around me. And I'm just going to leave the rest of this demo place for you guys. But anyways, but that is basically going to be everything for covering the windshake. I'm going to do a few different tutorials like the moving cloth and the flag. 
something similar to what I did with the smart bone, because few people have been requesting a windshake tutorial for a bit, and also I wanted to cover it because it's a neat module. So as usual, if you found this tutorial informative, then you can leave a like, and also subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support me more, you can become a channel member, for benefits on my YouTube channel and my Discord server, but that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching, and see ya!